Belgian Vit Beer. I'll tell you all about Belgian Vit Beer. too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is another one in the series of my beer histories or my potted beer histories and today the subject is Belgian Vit Beer. Now I've already done a history of German wheat beer. Vit Beer is its Belgian equivalent and it is a very, very popular style that has come back recently and is now being brewed by not only some of the bigger brewers, but also by craft brewers as well. So what I want to do in this program, I just want to give you a brief history of Vit Beer, how it came about, the revival of Vit Beer, how it is today, and the various types and ingredients that are used in Vit Beer. Vit beer is a beer that was brewed in Belgium during medieval times and it contained a lot of wheat in its grain bill. Now this wasn't unique to Vit beer. You had other styles of beer that used wheat in their grain bill as well, including lambics, which are another beer which I will discuss in another program. However, these types of beers didn't just contain wheat. They also contained what was known around the area with the, the Flemish speaking part of Belgium as Gruit and that would incorporate other styles of ingredients including spices, orange peel when it became available and various other ingredients that are not the traditional type of ingredients that are used or were used in beer at the time. Okay so a little bit about the term Vit beer. Vit beer translated from Flemish means white beer. And in the French speaking parts of Belgium, this has been translated literally. The Walloon parts of French speaking Belgium refer to this beer as Bière de Blanche, which literally means white beer. Okay, so the reason it got this name is because of the colour of the beer when it was cold it would go a very very pale yellow almost white and of course you had the white head in there and there were little sediments of yeast in there which gave it a very very light appearance hence the name Vit Beer Beer de Blanche. Let's get on to the development of Vit Beer. Now as I said before it was brewed using a variety of ingredients, a lot of them not traditional beer brewing ingredients. And it remained quite popular all through the medieval times up until the 20th century. And even then there were some breweries that were still brewing Vit beer in and around Belgium. However, by 1957, the last Vit beer brewer closed its gates and Vit beer was being brewed no more. It had basically gone extinct. Who came to the rescue? Of all the unlikely candidates, it was a Belgian milkman who came to the rescue. Now this milkman, his name was Pierre Kellis. And he lived in a region in Belgium called Hoe Garden. Can you see where this is going? Now, as well as being a, a milkman by trade, he was also a bit of a novice brewer. And during the early 60s and the mid 60s, he lamented the passing of Vit beer. And he went round asking people because he'd never tasted the beer himself as it was brewed traditionally, he went round asking the population of his hometown 
what this beer tasted like. And he made notes and he set about brewing it himself. As I say, he was a bit of a home brewer and he started experimenting and brewing this stuff in his house to varying degrees of success until 1966 when he opened his first brewery. That was the brewery Kellis and he started brewing Wittbeer. What did he call this Wittbeer? He named it after his hometown of Ho Garden. And the Ho Garden you see today is a direct descendant. Now, Peter Kellis was, you could say, the modern father of Belgian Wittbeer. And his beer became very popular indeed. So much so that other brewers started brewing this Wittbeer. But of course, Ho Garden was the most popular because it was the first. And I actually do remember it coming over to this country in the 90s and would have been about 1996 or 7 I think I remember first seeing it and it was very expensive over here unique in the style of glass it was served in it was served in what could only be described as a German wheat beer glass I'll get onto the glassware later but this is how I remember it and it was very expensive as I say but it looked unique it was cloudy it was very light in color it had a big foamy head and the taste took a little bit of getting used to. It didn't really kick off here until after, maybe about seven or eight years later. And of course, Ho Garden was being brewed the 70s in Belgium. However, in 1985, disaster struck the Kellis Brewery and some of it burnt down. And that was a big blow for Kellis because he didn't have his brewery insured. And that meant he had to plough all his profits back into the brewery. And that was not a good move for him because it more or less bankrupted him and he was forced to sell to Interbrew, who, of course, became AB InBev after that. With the money he made from the sale of the brewery, he went to America. He smuggled some of his yeast over to America, or the same yeast that had been used in the Ho Garden beer in Belgium, he smuggled that to the United States, Austin, Texas, to be precise, and he started brewing there. And again, Vit beer became popular, so much so that Miller Coors bought his brewery out. Now, sadly, Peter Kellis died in 2011, but he has to be remembered as the father of modern Belgian Vit beer. He has done more for that style than any particular Belgian brewer or individual in modern times. And of course, Belgian Wittbier is where it is now. It is quite popular, certainly in Belgium. There are a lot of Belgian brewers that brew Wittbier now. It is a standard Belgian style and it always has been. And it's more popular than ever. You can always find a Belgian Wittbier on any menu around the restaurants or bars in Belgium. What are the characteristics of a Belgian Wittbier or Bière de Blanche? Firstly, the colour. That will be the first thing you will notice. And it differs from German wheat beer. Now, German wheat beer is usually a dark yellow or orange in appearance. And it has the big foamy white head. Now, even though Belgian Vit beer does have this big foamy white head, it's served in different glassware and it is a different colour. The colour is like a pale yellow and in that pale yellow mass, you will see that it's quite cloudy and it contains suspended yeast. So this suspended yeast, like it does with German wheat beer, it will give a secondary fermentation in the bottle. And again, you pour everything into the glass when you fill it out. That more or less is the similarity between Belgian and German wheat beer. The flavors couldn't be more different and they are unique. Where the German style is very sweet, the Belgian style is quite tart and spicy and has a drier mouthfeel to it. It still has more or less the same levels of carbonation to try and preserve that foamy white head, but it also has the addition of spices such as coriander. 
It has Curacho orange peel, which is a bitter orange from a former Dutch colony in the, in the Caribbean. They are unique to that island. They are grown there and they are used in most Belgian Vit beers because the orange peel or the zest gives it a nice bitter orange flavor to it. And then of course you've got the most important ingredient in most beers and that is the yeast. The yeast will give you clove, fennels, and some, to some degree, banana esters as well. And you get all them flavors in the beer. And it does taste good. Believe me, I do like Belgian Vit beer. Now, Belgian Vit beer can be served in a variety of glassware, but there are two main types. Firstly, there's this type. That is the most common. Ho Garden is served in a glass that looks like that. But I have also seen it served when it first came over, as I mentioned before, when it first came over to the United Kingdom, it was served in a glass that was quite reminiscent of a German Weizen glass. And I'm assuming that was to preserve the head as it does with a German Weizen. There are some great Belgian brewers who are brewing Witbeer at this moment in time. Of course, I have to mention Hogarden. That is the father of all Belgian Witbeers. If it wasn't for Hogarden, there would be no Belgian Witbeers. I'm sure somebody would have revived that style, but they didn't. It was Pierre Kellis with his version of his own style of Witbeer that was Ho Garden. All Belgian Vit beer since then has been a sort of carbon copy of that. But there are some very good Belgian Vit beers on the market today. There are three Belgian Vit beer brewers that for me really do stand out. The St. Bernardas Vit, I really did like. That was a good one. I've reviewed that on the channel. Please watch my video of the channel if you want to see what I thought of that. Then you have the Blanche de Namur from the uh, Steenberg Brewery. That is another really nice Belgian style Vit beer. And probably one of my favourites which really doesn't get the credit it's des it deserves in my opinion. It is super drinkable, very nice, very refreshing when it's cold and that is the Blanche de Brussels which I absolutely loved. I've reviewed that on the channel. That is on there if you want to see my take on that one. Now they say imitation is the best form of flattery and there are a few brewers not from Belgium that are brewing this Vit style. In fact, there are quite a few. I'll quickly pop up a list of craft brewers that I know of that are doing Belgian Vit styles. So most of them are worth checking out. They, really have studied and they really have got this Belgian style flavor in their Vit beer. But there are a couple of anomalies, shall I say. The first thing that I did notice when I tried white IPA was how very similar it was to Belgian Vit beer. For all intents and purposes, white IPA, from what I can gather, is a Belgian Vit with some extra hops thrown in. Now you have to remember, the hops in Belgian Vit beer are not really prominent. With the Belgian style, it's all about the yeast, it's all about the spice, it's all about the orange peel, it's basically the adjuncts that have been added to it. And of course, wheat is an adjunct, or it's classed as an adjunct, and that's present in Belgian Vit beer as well. But this white IPA, I'm not sure whether it's trying to cash in on the IPA market, whether it's just an experiment gone wrong, or whether it's just a highly hopped Belgian Vit. Either way, I don't care. It tastes really good. And I will give a special mention to the Siren White IPA, which I tried recently. It's reviewed on the channel, and I thought it was excellent. Now, there is always a downside to a style of beer. And this is a personal bugbear of mine. I do not like Blue Moon. 
for a number of reasons. Now, Blue Moon, if you're not aware, that is a, an American brewed Belgian style Vit beer. And I don't like it for a number of reasons. Firstly, the taste. I just do not like the taste of it. I don't think it's a good representation of the style and I don't like the flavor. Secondly, what I don't like is it's brewed by Miller Coors. And of course they have used in the past all the snaky tactics that these big corporations sometimes use. Firstly, they try to advertise this and promote this as being a craft brewed Belgian vit, which of course it wasn't. It was a mass produced beer that was owned by Coors, uh, Miller, it was owned by Miller Coors. And it really didn't have much of the characteristics of a craft brewed beer. Well, in fact, it, it wasn't a craft brewed beer. And the Brewing Association of America pulled them up on this and said, look, this isn't right. You shouldn't be doing this. And eventually they reneged and they restyled it. Then again, there was a problem and they were eventually taken to court because it was basically a case of false advertising where they had put Belgian Vit beer on the label. It was no such thing. It wasn't brewed in Belgium. It was a Belgian style Vit beer. And they were taken to court and they, they went all the way. And just before it went to court, they decided they were on a hiding to nothing and they settled out of court. So that was the end of that. And the final word on Belgian Vit beer, and that includes Blue Moon, do not, as I mentioned in my previous video on German wheat beer, please don't add slices of orange or lemon into the side of the glass. An American barman, I think from Oregon, has decided that would be a good idea to promote the fruity flavors or the orange flavors specifically that are in a Vit beer. It's not, it's the quickest way to kill a head. If you apply citric acid, which you do get in slices of fruit, if you apply that to a foamy white head on a beer, it will instantly dissipate. It will kill the flavor that you get when you drink through the head because there will be no head. It will have dissipated. So there you go. Hopefully that has given you a bit of an insight into Belgian Vit beer. As I always say on these videos, if I've made a mistake, if you think you can add anything, or you think I've definitely got something wrong that needs addressing and you can back it up with evidence, please get in touch, please leave comments. I will hold my hands up, I will apologize, and I will make an adjustment in a follow-up video. So there you have it. Hopefully that's given you some knowledge on Belgian Vit beer. Please like and subscribe, please follow the channel, and please watch my other videos for a bit of background on some of the beers I've been talking about. And remember, beer is working class champagne.